Hello, and thank you very much for joining me today. My name's Sophie Perez, and I'm a Mornington Peninsula artist. Um, I currently have an exhibition at the Mornington Regional Gallery, but as we know, everything has been closed down for a while. I was also going to be taking a workshop here in my new studio, which I'm actually very excited to show you all because this is the first time people have been in. Um, so instead, we're going to um, very excitingly try a little online workshop. So here we go. Right. As you know, I'm a landscape painter, and um, like everybody, I've, I've slightly changed my, my work at the moment to fit the current climate, and we all have a different way of approaching it. So I have set up on my Instagram account for people, I'm inviting people to send me an image of their favourite place, landscape, something that's, that's special to them that they can't reach at the moment. And they're sending the photos through to me, and I'm... Um, using my painterly interpretation to create some, um, just over here on the wall, some nine by 10 canvas paper images, which I will be sending free across the world. Anyway, today I thought I'd show you, it's pretty much how I work on a bigger scale anyway, um, and my process. So today, as people have been sending me images on my phone, I will be doing it from my phone. I've been very fortunate and people have really got on board what I've been planning to do here. So um, it's extremely lovely to feel connected to people at the moment that, that can't connect to people. We're meeting people and we're seeing traveling through paint. Right, so what I do basically for all my paintings, I look at the image maybe in the flesh on the, uh, on the image or a photo or been out myself and captured it. And I look at it and think, how can I take this photo, which is a perfectly formed photo, into something else, into my landscape. How am I going to invite the viewer into my landscape? So very basically, I use oil paints here. You can see I've got a selection of colors on my palette. An amazing invention, a little glass table with some wheels on it. And I will choose a medium sized brush and I will look at the base color that, that stands out to me and I'll just literally start blocking out compositionally where the image, don't have to be too precious about it. I'll just block out my shape. And as you can see, I work really thin. I thin my oils down with turpentine. And this, this not only gives a really nice, almost like watercolor washy effect, it enables me to work quickly and it, and it dries a lot quicker than um, if it was the thicker paint. And for me, a lot of my work is really important that the brush mark and the size of the brushes and the different, um, different direction of them add the movement and an interest in the surface. Here we go. So as you can see, I have one, two, three, four, eight panels going on at once because now I have to leave that to dry. And if I had to sit there and dry, I would be on Instagram for a few hours. So instead of sitting there browsing my phone, I have another image that I'd like to start. So whilst I've got my greens mixed up for my previous palette, I've chosen another image which is predominantly has a green background so that when they're small, I like to try and paint like they're big images. Use the paint without mixing it up because it becomes wasted. So this second image is of a spectacular, the Red Hill in as an Airbnb and it's absolutely fantastic. Obviously people can't um, visit and use the place at the moment. So um, I'm creating a place to go on the wall in there. So this one's a slightly cooler. Again, I'll keep the, um, the paint nice and thin, just so I can block out. Remember, even though these are slightly off square, some of the compositions that have been sent through to me are much more portrait or landscape. So, uh, you know, bearing in mind the traditional rule of thirds, I'm trying to adapt the, the composition as I go, so that I know that it will work as a final image. quite a tricky time not being able to, to be outside and socialize because I don't know about you, I like, I like being out with my friends. I like, I like talking and I like being with people. So being in the studio for me at the moment is um, a really fantastic way to connect to what's going on outside. Let's keep this. this is going to be quite a lot warmer than the color that the image has sent me. But again, when, when I start off, I like to do a lot of underpainting to try and block out so that when you put it back across, the top painting, when it's dry, it gives it a very different depth when you're painting. There. 
So whilst I've got a couple blocked out, just to show you how I start the process, I've got, this is yesterday's painting. So now I've basically blocked out some of the compositions. Some, some are harder than, than others because they're not necessarily the subject I would have chosen to paint. So it's been really, it's been an exciting challenge to push myself again to look at it from a painting perspective. So now that's already ready. This is ready for a little bit more definition and a few more layers. I've got the cooler colors underneath. So I'm gonna start building back up just to give the branches a little bit of definition here. As you can see, I, I work quite quickly and this enables me to keep, I like seeing the movement in, in the work. I like seeing the different paint marks. I like seeing how it has been done. I like the process. For me, it's, it's much about the process of the painting than it is the actual subject itself. As you can see, I, I use a, quite a limited range of paints, even though it's everywhere, and I mix my own colours as I go, depending on the light. Sometimes I've been, um, especially with commissions, they want a certain feel to the, to the painting so I can subtly you know, adapt to the palette. I like to keep making sure that even though I haven't been to this place, I keep looking at the landscape that the person has sent me to really try and get the essence of what it is and their story. They've sent me some beautiful stories. The story behind what they are wanting me to capture in the actual image. And a few of them, I've actually been to quite a few of them, but I've also got some places in Brazil and um, all these kind of exotic locations that I haven't been to. So having the, having the familiar story behind it is really quite grounding. So here I'm using some cooler tones underneath and a warmer tone. So the general idea of that is if you put a, a cool background and a warmer tone on top or the other way around, it gives a really, real intense depth that you wouldn't necessarily have if you just painted it flat onto the surface. And I'm still using quite a big brush here. This is actually one of my favorite sizes. Number eight, so favorite, I had to look at it. Um, which um, is a really lovely, um, as I say, I'm trying to remember how I paint big with my whole body, even though it's a small image. Otherwise they become a bit. <laughs> and again, that's another layer that I'll have to leave until I am. Um, till it dries and then I'll get a finer brush and I'll work in some of these depths and different to give a foreground, a middle ground and a background because at the minute it's quite a one, a flat image. And now this piece here is some phenomenal rocks in uh, WA called thrombolites in uh, Mandura. And to be quite honest, the image this person has sent me is insanely amazing. So I'm trying to work out through paint, how, how can I add to this image that she sent me because I'm not I'm not a literal realist painter I'm not going to try and copy what she sent me I'm trying to get the essence of the place without visiting it and I'm to be honest I'm quite blown away by this uh, these rocks and this uh, formation so um this has taken me a little longer than the others because every time I've painted it I'm I haven't quite I haven't quite got it for me so I've, I've reworked it and um I feel I'm getting there but um so if it's not I'll start again but um it's it's quite an exciting process to keep to keep pushing. So mixing up these cooler gray blues. I've just got the basic um, titanium white and just a Winsor & Newton. I've got an amazing deep blue on my favorite old Holland paints here and, um, and the classic Payne's gray. I never actually use black. So a lot of these images, even though they look very dark, I use a vert fonce. It's a, a very dark green Old Holland or the Payne's Grey, just to give it a slightly cooler, bluer tinge to it. So there we go, I'm putting a bit of there. And it just gives it a very, black's, black's very harsh and it seems to dominate my painting. So even on the very darkest spots, you can, you can make your own black. So, so now I'm at the point where I'm just beginning to highlight and block out these shapes, give them a little bit more form. As I'm a loose painter, sometimes you need a little bit more definition and a smaller brush just to finish off 
these cooler tones at the front. It's a fantastic, fantastic place. Another thing about all these places is I've, uh, I've got my list of travels within Australia next year sorted, because like many, we were also um, heading off this year, heading off to Italy, heading off to the Pilbara region to do a painting trip. So I'm feeling very inspired to see all these places that I've yet to discover myself. Technology. Like when I'm working on a big scale, I have to I have to step back a lot just to. A lot of my paintings work from a distance, so it's um it's quite important to remember that and just step back and see how see how they sit as a whole before I overwork them, because I'm working on paper with these oils as well. I have to be really mindful that it's not canvas, and sometimes with the canvas you can you can especially the poly cotton you can really give it some, but with the with the paper. If I'm not careful, it can begin to disintegrate on the surface. And the idea of keeping these is to keep them fresh, keep them moving, try and capture it without overworking it. So, um, yeah, here we go. So yeah, a bit of, a bit of pure titanium white amongst those greys there just really lifts the sunlight, which is an amazing reflection here on the water and they're between the rocks. I don't want to paint every single thing I can see. I'm trying to paint, as I keep saying, I'm trying to paint the essence of what this person has experienced on their holiday and, and is um, thinking very fondly of it now. Although I, I, like, I feel like I paint sometimes like I could be using watercolours with the thin down, the layers, the surfaces, I clearly don't because I, I use a lot of white. I find it very hard to paint in, the negative, in a negative space. But um, apart from that, I, I, I feel like my process isn't um, your usual oil application. Very intuitive. A bit, a bit of highlighting on the uh, horizon line. Again, I like to draw out a lot of I don't draw out with the, a pencil, but I feel like I draw with the paint. So as I'm going along, anything can be rubbed off, anything can be worked back. It's just a nice, um, get some definition in the landscape, the horizon. And if it's too harsh, like that clearly is, what I do is get a little rag, put a bit of turpentine on it, and just work it back to the, this is amazing, this is Canson um, 300 GSM canvas paper. And um, it's the first time I've actually used it. <laughs> it's fantastic, absolutely fantastic. Very pliable, very forgiving. So yeah, another one I'm gonna have to leave that to dry for now as well now. So I just wanted to show you finally to wrap this up. These are some of the finished um, pieces that I've produced and I'm, I'm actually quite pleased with the results. When you take the masking tape off the edge, it really, it's like it's being framed. It gives it a real um, edge to the painting. So. I say a lot of these pieces have been all over the place. These, these happen to be Tasmania, this was Brazil, this is Mount Eliza, this is somewhere in Gippsland, this is Italy. How beautiful, this story was really beautiful. She's it's a surprise present for her husband, 27 years, wedding anniversary. He happened to grow up there in France, actually, not Italy, France. Um, and so on, lots of Australian places. So in this unforeseen circumstance, which is the new normal, I found, I found this a really amazing process in this time of uncertainty, the connections that I've had with people that I'd never met, never would have met, never been in contact with, and sending me their beautiful stories about some special places has really been quite a cathartic process for both the, the person contacting me and myself. If, if you would like a painting of your own of a special place or somewhere you can't get to at the moment, I know that a lot of my, my family is still in the UK, so I'm, I've a lot of, all of them going back that way. I'd, I'd love 
to paint it for you. So please um, have a look at my Instagram and send me a photo. Keep safe and keep well. Thank you.